five o'clock on a Wednesday, and it's time for a Craig and Ryland Magic Review Show. I'm Craig. I'm Ryland. And welcome to another review show right here on a Magic TV, where I am wearing my uh, signature checked flannel shirt and black t-shirt, and Ryland is most definitely not wearing a pair of pajamas. Nothing to see here. This is not a pair of pajamas. <laughs> this is a normal t-shirt. The Zeds on there don't mean. Sleepy Ryland, no, 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 no. The Zeds, as in, they're short for zombie, because Ryland's cool, he likes zombies, and he would never wear his pyjamas to film a review show. Anyway, um, would you write? No. Anyway, uh, welcome back to another review show, and uh, we're going to be looking at some brand new magic, very, very exciting, some stuff that's really good, some stuff that's not so good, some stuff that Ryland's going to go a full-on rant on, some stuff that he's taken real, real real exception to uh, but we're going to start off with a really good trick brand new by penguin magic and uh, we're going to start off with that one right now so the first trick we're going to be looking at is transpo travel by lewis omira and it is brand new from penguin magic this is a brand new trick and uh when we went over to the midwest magic convention and nick was there nick lacopper mm -hmm. he was uh deming this at the stand and you had your little mind blown and then I performed it for you and you had a little mind blown. And this, I've got to tell you right now, is a very, very, very cool trick. Yeah. Like, this is awesome. Um, you get all the... Well, you know what? I'm not actually going to say anything. I'm not going to talk about it just yet. I want you to see a performance of this. So I'm going to show you uh, a performance of this now so you can see exactly what it looks like. And then after the performance, we'll talk about what we think. Okay, right, I'm going to show you something with a, with a deck of cards. Now, we're going to take the jokers out. They might become important a little bit later on. But until then, we're going to take them out and we will return to the jokers a bit later, okay? Yeah. Uh, the important thing isn't the jokers. The important thing is these cards. I'm going to tell you what I do before I do it. I'm going to take the cards, cut in just the right place. One cut. I'm going to find an ace. Watch. Good. One cut. One card, one ace. How's that? Cool. That's cool. Let's see if we can do it again. Look, I'm going to cut three times this time. That's one, two, three cuts. And with three cuts, I can get the second ace. Every single time an ace, I get an ace, it becomes more difficult. Uh, the next one's exactly 30 seconds from the, the 37 from the bottom. So if I do this and this and this, I should be able to get... The next day, how's that for you? That's cool. <laughs> one last one, watch, I'll, uh, I'll cut like this, like this, like this. Then I'll give them one of these, one of these, one of these, and I'll finish off with one of them, 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 and then with any luck, I get all four aces. Now, the four aces are the clubs, the hearts, the spades, and the diamonds. Which one do you want to be the leader ace? The spades. Are you sure? Yeah. A traditionalist. <laughs> I like that, okay. So, the ace of spades is going to be the leader ace, yeah? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one, I'm going to take two, I'm going to take three cards and put them on top of the ace of spades. Is that cool? Yeah. Now, watch. These aces go into the deck. So the ace of clubs goes there, the ace of diamonds goes there, and the ace of hearts goes there. I'm going to push them in. I'm going to make these aces vanish on three. One, two, three. And just like that, the aces have gone. What? Yeah, the aces have disappeared. Look, no aces. And you know why the aces have gone? Why? Well, here's a question. What, I've had, uh, what have I had over here from the very beginning? I've had one ace and some indifferent cards. If they were the aces, would that be good? Yeah. What about if I snap my fingers and I showed you that these were actually the two jokers? The two jokers that were actually over there from the beginning. So if they're the jokers, that means these are the four aces. That's cool. And that's the trick. Okay, so that is uh, Transpo Travel. Yep. Now, there's a lot to love about this. First of all, the tutorial, as you would expect from Penguin Magic, is really great. You've got Nick on there, you've got Lewis on there. They go through everything with a fine-tooth comb. There are multiple live performances, and you can tell. You can tell that this has been worked in the real world, and this works 100% of the time. It looks exceptional. Um, the tutorial is second to none. Also, the cards that come with it are great as well. You get everything that you need to be able to perform yep. this trick. Um, 
It's not that difficult to do. They go through a couple of different options in terms of how to perform it, but the gimmicked cards do do a lot of the work for you. There is some stuff that you need to do and you need to have uh, experience maybe um, with doubles, or, although you're not really holding a double, the cards are doing all of that for you. You do need to have confidence that people aren't gonna see what you're doing. Um, but, but, but the cards look good, the tutorial looks good. The effect is incredible. You know, the Jokers get put aside at the beginning, you get the four aces, and they turn into the Jokers. That moment where those aces turn into the Jokers, you just don't see it coming. Every time you saw it, it completely fooled you. Um, so, I think the one negative for me, the one thing is, and it's not really a negative, but it's something you need to be aware of. You are going to have to, and it's worth it, but you are going to have to, dedicate an entire deck of cards to this. Because even though there's only like five or six gimmicked cards, there is an extensive setup on top of the deck. It's like a 12 card setup, and there's two other cards in the middle of the deck that need to be put into a certain position. Now, it almost resets itself instantly. It's probably within 15, maybe 20 seconds you reset, ready to go again. But you couldn't just take this deck and go into another routine, a full deck routine, because you're left kind of dirty there's various different parts of the deck that are left kind of in a situation where you wouldn't necessarily want to be able to go into another card trick. Now, what you could do is you could say, hey, let me take four cards out and do something like a twisting the aces or something. You, you know, you could do that absolutely 100%. The aces that you've been left with are real aces. They're normal aces that could be examined. And to be honest, I don't think examinability is an issue here because even though the yeah. deck can't be examined... it. it, it you could you could give it a casual examination and nobody would find anything. Yeah. The issue is you couldn't use this deck for something else afterwards. This would have to be a, I'm going to show you a card trick. Now let me put the cards away and do something else. Now that's fine. How many times in the real world do you do one trick uh, with a deck of cards and then you put it away and you go into something else? I mean, it's fine. You don't have to structure everything around like a mug, a massively long card set, but it's something that you need to take into consideration. Outside of that, I think it's really good. What are your thoughts on it? You, you don't do card tricks, do you? I don't know if he'd actually do this. I haven't spoken to you about it. I know you like it. I know you really like yeah. it. What's your thoughts on it? Now, obviously, um, I don't really do card tricks, but I do. I do really like it. Do you? I think it's really good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, would you do it? What What percentage are you giving it? At seventy nine percent. Seventy nine percent. So you're not going to do it. But obviously. If I did card tricks, it would be something like nine five. But side note, why do you not do card tricks? Everybody does them. That's the thing. Everybody does them. Yeah, like if you go to a magician, they're all. It's usually if you like ask to see a trick, it's usually a card trick. That's true. Isn't it though? It's it's, it's usually a card trick they they'll show you. So you like to be a little bit different. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I'll, I'll accept that. He's going to get seventy nine percent. I'm giving it 90%. I think it's really good. It's a very strong trick. It's a really good release from Penguin. The price is very reasonable. And you just saw the performance. If you like the performance and you want to be able to perform that style of magic trick, then you're not going to be disappointed. It's not even that hard to do. It's called Transfer Travel. 90% from me, 79% from him. Let's move on to the next trick. Okay, so the next routine we're going to be looking at is SEM. So SEM stands for Sun, Earth and Moon. And it's by the coin legend himself, probably the best coin magician alive today, in my opinion, uh, Michael Rubenstein. And uh, if you've not read Michael's book on coin magic, it is the modern day expert coin magic. Uh, Michael is uh, a massive source of inspiration for me in my career. And I think that he has done more for coin magic than, you know, most other magicians put together with obviously certain exceptions like David Roth. I mean, Michael Rubenstein is great. And you know that when Michael brings something out, it's going to be really worked in. And that's what we have here. So what SEM is, it's a collection of gimmicks. Uh, you get a lot with SEM. So you get uh, a ton of stuff. And one thing, what I like about Michael's uh, releases when he brings a trick out, I very much like the fact that there is so much that they give you. Like he gives you um, like a container to keep all of the props in. So you get, a, you get like a, a four page A4 script so you can learn the script if you want to. You get multiple live performances. You get all of the coins beautifully made. Um, like the coins are 
gorgeous. You get so much stuff as part of this set. Really, really nice. Um, and I encourage you to go and watch Michael's routine. And the reason is, I tend to find Michael's presentations are just so... I really like the way Michael presents magic. I really yeah. do. And I don't have that ability to present it the same way as him. And every single time he releases a trick, and he's released tricks in the past, like the bear, the, the four bears. Uh, every time, I, you know, I'll spend ages trying to learn his script and failing miserably just because the way that he presents magic is not the way that I do it. And so it doesn't work for me. And I suppose the, the, the you know, the rule here is to try and make something your own. Um, the tutorial is like about an hour and 45 minutes and goes through everything with a, and it, it is a masterclass. The tutorial is shot from the front with live performances, but then each section, he breaks the routine down into sections, and each section has a camera over the shoulder, like breaking down each move from behind. Like he's really thought about how to teach magic, and it is a mini masterclass in coin magic. He goes through a lot of the moves that he actually published in his, uh, in his book, Rubenstein's Coin Magic. Um, I'm going to show you a performance of me doing this, but I encourage you to go and see Michael's presentation as well because I've taken a couple of liberties with his routine. There's things that worked for me, things that didn't really work for me so much, things that uh, he does brilliantly uh, that I can't pull off as a performer. So I've changed things around slightly. More importantly, I've changed the script around as well just to fit me. Um, and, and, you know, that's kind of important to me um, that I kind of try and make every single trick my own. But this is my performance of, uh, of SEM, so you can see exactly what, is meant to happen. Yeah. Uh, Michael, do you know what that is? A globe. Correct, well done. Uh, this is actually a present from my mom and dad, well, my dad, on my uh, 10th birthday. Uh, true story, actually, on the day before my 10th birthday, I asked my dad, who's the biggest joker on the planet, uh, what I was gonna get for my birthday, and he said, I'm gonna give you the earth. I was very excited, and then I woke up in the morning, and I unwrapped my present, and I got that. Um, <laughs> which wasn't the greatest present of all time, but I suppose technically he did give me the earth, which was slightly different to my mom. Uh, she gave me a pocket. Not the whole jeans, just the pocket. We came from a very poor family. Um, but why would I not want a pocket from a pair of jeans when that's where I can keep my coins? And inside here, I have a, uh, a, a two coins. I have this coin and this coin. Uh, this is a silver coin. This is an Eisenhower silver dollar. It's got a moon on it. A lot of people don't realise, but it does. And this is an Aztecian coin. And it's got the Aztec sun in it. So technically, uh, that can represent the sun. So Michael, this represents the earth. Uh, this one here represents the sun, uh, sorry, this represents the moon, this represents the sun, this represents the earth. Do you know what the pocket represents? A pocket? Correct, well done. <laughs> um, good stuff, yes, a pocket. Now here's the thing, um, we take the sun and the moon for granted, but it's really kind of almost as close to magic as you can get. Remember, this actually represents the sun. So what happens at night is the sun disappears from view. Now, it's still there. We just can't see it because it's on the other side of a globe. Yes, because it's a globe. It's not that. And you, can see, you, you can't see it because it's on the other side of a globe, right? And then what happens is when the sun goes down, uh, the moon comes up and we get, we get covered by moonlight. Uh, and then what will happen is the moon will go down and the sun will come up. And where the sun was, the moon, and it keeps going on again and again and again. And I'm using these coins to demonstrate this principle to you, Michael. I'm trying to do educational magic. I'm educating you as well as doing magic. This is uh, edutainment. So I hope you enjoyed. Um, now, have you ever heard of a lunar eclipse? That's the next thing we need to talk about. Yeah. Yes, a lunar eclipse. That's when a moon disappears. Does it actually disappear, Michael? No. No. Although people think it disappears. If you were living a few thousand years ago and you saw the moon vanish out of the sky, you'd think it was real magic. It's not. But if you watch that moon, if you watch it, because remember, the moon is the silver one. If you watch the moon, I mean, if you watch that moon, if you watch that moon, it almost looks like it vanishes completely without leaving a trace. Now we know it's not really vanished, we know it's science and it's actually hidden by the earth and if you want to find the moon it's not hard to find, all you have to do is just move the earth out of the way. Wait, what? The, the, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the, try and keep up, that's the, <laughs> that's the, um, we're not following this obviously. Look, I'll tell you what, let's see if we can go one step further. Uh, let's put that over there, look, 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 we'll go further. I know what I can do. Would you like to, here's the thing, I'm going to educate you on something very important right now. Um, have you ever seen the Earth and the Moon at the same time in the sky? No. No. Do you know why? Can't happen. Do you know what would happen if the Earth and the Moon occupied the same space at the same time? What? I believe that the Earth would blow up. 
Huh? I believe that the earth would blow up, and I can demonstrate this with the pocket. Well, the pocket okay. will be a little cover. Do you remember the globe? Yeah. Do you see the globe? Yeah. Do you see the pocket? Yeah. Look. Huh? I've just made that. I've just. Made, I'm trying to make everything <laughs> clear for you. Everything clear, <laughs> clear. This is this is clear. So I'm trying to make everything clear. It's a it's a joke. It's not funny. Um, <clears throat> let me just put this back. Hang on a minute. Just going to put it back into position. Uh, I can't find the hole. There it is. Done. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to show you something else. Do you know what the defining characteristic of the sun is? Hot. Correct. Well done. Do you know how hot it is? Very. Very hot. Like, if you came close to it, you would burn into a million ashes. It, it, very hot. Um, so if I put this the sun into the pocket, first of all, Never put the sun into your pocket. It's really a bad idea. If somehow you manage to catch a sun, which I don't think you could anyway, don't put it in your pocket, Michael. There's a lesson for you, okay? But if you did put it in your pocket, it's so hot, what would happen is it would melt through the pocket and penetrate down. <laughs> but Michael, this is a lesson. There's no hole in the pocket. I haven't actually made a hole. This is magic. There's a rule in magic. Never repeat the trick. Would you like me to do it again? Yes, go for Why it. Why would I not do it again if you want me to do it again? Where is the sun, Michael? In your hand. Where is the sun now, Michael? In the pocket. Where is the sun now, Michael? Still in the pocket. Until I do this, and that's when it penetrates down onto the table. I mean, honestly, have you ever been educated so much in a magic trick in your life? Never. Never. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help. Um, so we have the sun and we have the moon. There's only another 47 phases, Michael, so buckle in, we're <laughs> almost there. Um, the important thing, though, is that the sun and the, uh, and the moon, they, uh, they, they, they're separate to each other. So do you see the moon? Where's the moon? In your left hand. Very good. Where's the sun? In your right hand. Look, watch the moon. 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 Where's the moon? In your left hand. Where's the moon, Michael? Where's the sun, Michael? In your right hand. Yeah, but remember, at the end of the night... They will switch places. Look <laughs> at that. Do you feel educated? Very. You should do. Um, but you know, every trick needs a big finish. Would you like to see the big finish, Michael? Go for it. Say go. Go. Hang on, let me just use the magic pocket. Gone. I don't have a magic wand, I have a magic <laughs> pocket. That's, it's, uh, it's all I need. Uh, that makes the two coins vanish. Do you know where they've gone? In the pocket? Well, no. Only the sun has gone into no. the Michael pocket. Into the pocket, Michael. Which, <laughs> which begs the question, how could the sun possibly get into the pocket? Because the sun would be too hot to go into the... It would burn through. We've already established that. I don't even understand. But remember, the moon is always underneath the earth. You just have to move the earth out the way to find it. And Michael, that is an entertaining little ditty. With a sun, with a moon, with an earth. And randomly, a pocket. So I mean, that's a that's that's quite a long routine. Yeah. Um, like your tricks. Like my tricks. Well, yeah, it but is. But obviously, this wasn't boring. This wasn't boring. Oh, thank you very much. Um, this is, um, yeah, it is multi-phase. Uh, Michael Rubenstein likes multi-phase magic. And when you see Michael perform it, and I really encourage you to go watch his presentation, he has kind of a more serious presentation of that, the sun and the moon. And I tried for probably about two weeks to get this script in my head, and I just couldn't. And, and when I kind of had it in my head, it wasn't really working as well I wanted it to. Um, but, but what you just saw there is my interpretation of the routine. Now, there's some really lovely moments there. One thing that Michael gives you, he gives you a prop so that you can do a no-lap switch. Now, um, that's a prop that I didn't particularly want to use in my act. He does it beautifully. Uh, David Roth does it beautifully. It's not something that I use in my act, so I kind of not use that. But that's the nice thing about Michael's routines. You can take the bits that you want, the bits that you don't want, you don't have to use. You get a beautiful globe and you get the see-through globe, so you can do kind of like the omni-globe, which looks absolutely amazing. The globe is gimmicked in many different ways. The coins are gimmicked. The coins are absolutely beautiful. Um, the whole routine is structured to perfection. You're going to learn so many moves in this, in this uh, trick as well. So many different things that you can incorporate into your own magic. Um, I don't know. What do you think of it? I really like it, and it looks it looks when you perform it difficult if you know what i'm trying to say i mean the coins are gimmicked yeah 
There is sleight of hand there, obviously. This is something that if you're a beginner coin, mag a coin magician or somebody who's just getting into coin magic, there's some moves there that might challenge you. But I suppose what you could do is you could take out certain phases, keep certain phases in and just go for the phases that would work for you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But you are right. It's not the easiest. If, if you're brand new to coin magic and you're not, you can do a lot of coin magic. But if you're brand new to coin magic, this might not be the routine that you want to start with. If you know what I mean, this is this is one that when you've had a little bit of experience with coin magic, you kind of go into this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so here's the question: Would you do it? It's up to you. I would. I'm not gonna. I'm, this is something that's going to constantly evolve for me, and what I mean by that is this is something that's going to change over time, and. I'm going to be putting a lot, it's, it's not ready for me to perform it in front of a real world audience yet. I'm going to be putting another couple of weeks practice into it. But I do want to do elements of this in my actual working set because I think there's elements that I think would work really well. I really want to incorporate the globe and the idea of the sun and the moon. I think that's a wonderful idea. There's certain things that I want to incorporate, certain things that I want to change. I love the idea of the omni thing, but I want to try and come up with a way that works it for me, maybe with a top it or something like that. Um, but I, I love this. I mean, I'm giving this 100%. Uh, but then again, I'm a fan of coin magic and I'm also a fan of Michael Rubenstein. Um, and I think that regardless of whether you do the routine exactly as, as Michael does it or you do it slightly differently, you're going to learn so much from this set. You really are. Um, what about you? Are you going to do it? I think I might give it 100%. I might yeah. have a go with it, yeah. You might have a go at it. This is, I mean, you do a lot of coin magic. You do, you do the Hang Ping Chen, you do the Gallo Pitch, you do flipper coins, you do that sort of stuff. Yeah. I think you could do, I think you could do this. If you wanted to do it, you'd have to want to put the effort in because this isn't yeah. something that you could literally do overnight. This is something you'd have to practice. Yeah. You're happy to do that? Yeah, I'm going to give it 100%. Okay. 100% from Ryland, 100% from me. They're only available from Dr. Michael Rubenstein, so you can get them directly from there. It's a fantastic trick. So next up, we're going to be looking at Fly Trap by uh, Birdie Trickering and um, oh, Abstract, Eff Abstract Effects. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So Abstract Effects is a company that we've given a lot of uh, we bad reviews to in the past. Yeah. And then they kind of went away for a bit, and uh, and now and then last year they came back. Tyler Lunsford, who is an amazing magician, is part of the Abstract Effect team. And, and this is their kind of first release since coming back to the Magic community. Now, um, Tyler was demonstrating this at Magic Live and he was opposite me. Uh, I was on the Penguin booth, he was opposite me. And I was watching him do this over and over again. Like he was just doing this over and over and over again. And he was getting really good reactions. Um, and, you know, I, I, Tyler's a great magician. He can make anything look great. Um, you and I spent quite a while looking at this, didn't we? Yeah. And, uh, and, and we want to start again with abstract effects because obviously we've said that they're not very good many, many times in the past because a lot of their releases haven't been very good. Um, what do you think of this one, Mike? I, I don't really like it. He doesn't like it. Um, now, I want to know why you don't like it, but before, you, before that... We're going to show you a performance of Ryland doing this. Um, uh, I got Ryland to do it because every single time somebody tried to film me doing it, I flashed over and over well, again. Have you got the I haven't got the deck. It's a, it's a, yeah. Oh. Every single time I, uh, I did it, I flashed. We must have filmed you how many times? I actually counted the cards. It was about 20. It was about 20. Because of how, without giving too much away, because of what happens in the routine, there's a moment that when you do it on camera, it's not really caught by the naked eye. You know, if you're kind of watching it live, it's not really something that you would pick up on. But if you're doing it to camera, if you're not careful, you very much can flash. And it took a lot of takes in order to get um, even a version that was kind of half decent. Um, so let's have a look at, right, okay, before we say any more, let's have a look at a performance of this. This is Ryland performing uh, fly trap. Let's have a look at this. Okay, so I've got two jokers here and I've got my sister. So, Thea, just touch any one of these cards. That one. That one. Are you sure? Sign the card for me. Okay. Nice and big. Yep. Just like that. Perfect. Now I'm going to put the card into the uh, deck and I'm going to take these two jokers and uh, cut the cards. Just make sure I'm not yes. cheating. Just cut. Like that. Yep. Oops. Just cut again. Just cut. Just cut. Yep. 
Yeah, and watch if I snap my fingers, you can actually see that one card appears right there. You can actually see that this one card is your signed two of spades. What? Okay, so I've got my thoughts. You've got your thoughts. First of all, this is not a diss on Tyler Lunsford at all. I think Tyler did a great job of the tutorial. And you can tell that Tyler has performed this a million times. Yeah. I have my thoughts, but I know you said you wanted to be quite vocal about this. So talk to me about what you think. Um, when we got it, I don't know if it's because we did it a lot, but it, it's it it's broken. Yeah, it break it breaks easily. Yes, so it's a very thin, flimsy gimmick. Yeah. Through practice, we spent a long time practicing it. Well, not a long time, actually. We probably, well, yeah, a few days. We spent a few days practicing it. And probably after day one, it started to look not very good. Yeah. It's now almost unusable. I'd say probably 50 or 60 practice sessions, and yeah. it looks dreadful. Now, to Abstract Effects credit, they do explain how to make another gimmick on the tutorial. But it's a nightmare to make. Yeah. I mean, it's not half the tutorial was taken up with this. Half the tutorial was taken up with, uh, with how to make a second gimmick. It's not an easy thing to do by any stretch of the imagination. So that's something you need to bear in mind. Um, there was a live performance, but it was at Magic Live. So there was a live performance at Magic Live. They made an effort to do that. Um, but, but, but outside of that, it's kind of just a tutorial done to camera and so on and so forth. But yes, yeah. you are right. They do break very, very easily. That's, yeah. that's, and I don't think people are going to go to the effort to make another one up, but they do, they do because of how flimsy they are and what you have to do in order to do the trick, you're putting pressure on that gimmick every single time you use it. And you're going to get to a point where it's just going to end up being Kaputsky. Could you sit there for like six hours and make a few of them up? Probably, but you know, I, I don't want to do that. Okay, so that's the first thing. What was the next? It's, um, it flashes a lot. <laughs> it does flash a lot, yeah. Um, because uh, that, it doesn't flash. The, so you just saw the performance. The whole idea is they pick a card. The two jokers are on top of the deck. First of all, it's kind of structured kind of badly. And what I mean by that is you take the two jokers out. Yep. Yeah. You put the two jokers face up on top of the deck. Yeah. Then you turn the deck face up and you have them pick a card yep. and you get them to sign it. I mean, like you the then put is... the card, hang on a minute, yeah. you get you put the card apparently into the middle of the deck. And then you take the jokers off and put them to one side. Well, if you want the jokers to be separate. That's what I was going to say. The question on. is why are you showing the jokers, putting them on, getting them to pick a card, then putting them back? And I think it's clear. Am I allowed to say that they're not really on in the middle? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, can. Yeah, you can, you, can, you can kind of see that they're not really going in the middle. Yeah, what they're doing is a reverse tilt, or a kind of yeah. a reverse tilt. But it you can is. tell you it's going... You yeah. can't really do that with the whole deck. No. I would say, obviously, you do it with the top top few cards. But yeah. when you're doing it with the... When you're not doing it with the real middle, like further down... Yeah. It gets kind of obvious. And that's the problem with the structure, like you say. Why aren't you just putting the... If the jokers are going to one side, why not put them to one side at the beginning? Why are you having them on top of the deck, having them pick a card, putting the card in the middle, and then putting the jokers to one side? Um, and, and when you put the jokers down to one side... The, 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 it's fine, but, but without giving too much away, if you're not careful, if somebody studied that... Those two jokers on the table, they kind of see that there's something up. Now, the focus is put on the deck. Especially so. as they break straight away. You can clearly see because it's broken. It's not broken on the inside. It breaks where the crease is on the outside. Mm -hmm. So you can clearly see yeah. what the gimmick is. Yeah, absolutely. And then the other problem is, in essence, what you have, what Ryland did is the main routine, which is a card is selected. Lost in the middle of the deck. Two jokers find the selected card. Now let's just... And there are a couple of other routines. There's a little wild cardy thing and something like that. But they're all variations on the theme. Tyler even says himself on the tutorial, it's the sandwich card routine that he does the most, right? That's... Right. That's the trick. Yeah. Why do you need a gimmick to do that? 
Like, yeah. okay, if you are going to use a gimmick, this is nowhere near as good as Monkey in the Middle. Let's be clear and think about Monkey in the Middle. You take the Jokers, you put them to one side, but they could even be held by the spectator because they are only two Jokers. The card gets lost. It looks like it goes in the middle of the deck. And then you take the two Jokers. The spectator can even drop them on top of the deck themselves. You spread and there's one card there in between the two Jokers. It's the card. And then immediately you can hand the two Jokers out for examination. Now compare that with this. You take two Jokers out. They can't be examined. You put the jokers on top of the deck, you have a card picked while the jokers are on top of the deck. The card is lost in the middle of the deck, but doesn't look like it's been lost in the middle of the deck. Now you take the two jokers off, but you can't give them to the spectator to hold on to. In fact, you've got to be kind of really careful because at this point, no one can even touch the jokers. You then take the two jokers, you shake them over the deck. One card appears, it's the card, and now the jokers can't be examined at all in any way, shape or form. Because if they examine it, they're going to realise exactly how it works. Yeah. So this isn't anywhere... So if you're going to use gimmicks, this is nowhere near as good as Monkey in the Middle. It's just not in any way, shape or form. But you could replicate... Don't get me a pack of cards. You could replicate this very, very easily with sleight of hand. Just, just any old deck, one that's open. You know, a speciality deck is definitely going to be a normal deck. Problem is we've got so many... I don't... Yeah, bring it over here. Why not? Oh, what you got? You got cohorts. Good choice, that man. Um, this is where I find out you've given me a dodgy cut. Yes, it's a gaff cohort deck. That's the Lloyd Barnes gaff deck. Be you careful. told me to get a special one. Yeah, just get a normal special. Just get me a deck of cards. I've got get me a deck. Of one. Get me a new deck of cards. Yeah. Open them up while I'm talking. Um, this could be done because if you think about, sit down, Bobby. The, the production of the card in between the two jokers is um thank you the production of the card in between the two jokers is you know it, it's the classic production it's how cards are produced so if we take two jokers out here we go let's take out the two jokers and give these cards a shuffle for example there we go you could for example here's here's a simple way of replicating this you have somebody pick a card, they pick the card. Now notice the two jokers are put to one side and they really are, you could give somebody the cards to hold on to. The two jokers are put to one side. They, uh, they pick a card, they look at it. You have the card put back. There you go, you do Gary, Con uh, Gary Jones' top con control because that's a really fair control where the card is going down into the middle and it's going down into the middle of this half and, and the card's getting lost into the pack like that. And then you take the two jokers, you put them over here, and you go, boom, now there's one card in between the jokers, and it's their card. And you might say, well, okay, Craig, but the problem with that is that you had to bring the jokers on top of the deck. That's what had to happen. Okay, well, let's try and do it this way. We'll take the two jokers, and we'll throw them down onto a table to begin with, right? You pick a card, pick a card, have a look at it, remember it, don't forget it, show it to the camera, don't show it to me. There you go, put the card back. Excellent stuff. You leave the card down in the middle of the deck. Gone, gone, gone. The card is lost down in the middle of the deck. Now you snap your fingers and look, there's one card in between the jokers. Look at that. One card and one card only. The five of hearts. Was that your card? Yeah. It was. I tell you what, I shouldn't repeat a trick, but I'm going to do it again. Watch the two jokers. Watch the five. It goes in the middle of the deck. All I have to do is leave the deck here. Take the two jokers, watch those two jokers, I give a little shake, one card is in between them, and it's the five. And I've not needed any gimmicks, it's just a regular deck of cards. There is an absolute million ways to achieve what Flytrap does with sleight of hand. There is a million, without, without, in, in, com, without compromising any positive to this routine. You know, because if you think about it, if you're going to be like really laser positive about this trick, you'd say, well, the jokers can, can uh, you know, the jokers can be shown over here. Well, you know, you've got to have them on the deck. That's the point. You've got to have them on the deck and you've got to do this kind of weird move. With the routine I just showed you, the jokers are put to one side right at the very beginning. I'm going to put the jokers to one side right at the very beginning. Look, you can see them there, two jokers. They take a card, the Ten of Hearts. It's lost down into the middle of the deck. Boom, boom, boom. That looks cleaner than how they're doing it. Now, you could, if you wanted to, you know, you've done this, 
and you've done this and you've done this and you've produced it the first time and you've shown it's the uh, it's the 10 and you've put it down there you could then if you wanted to have them shuffle the cards and you say well i tell you what you shuffle the cards now they're shuffling the cards which is exactly the same as flytrap now put the cards down there now i'm going to take these two jokers there you go i'm going to take these two jokers watch the two jokers look at this Boom, and there you go, there's the card. So the point I'm trying to make is regardless of whether you use a gimmick and you use something like um, a monkey in the middle or you use sleight of hand, you can achieve basically the same type of a trick without this gimmick. But you're not going to have to worry about examinability issues. You're not having to worry about angles because you might go, oh yeah, but Craig was using doubles at that point there and he was throwing doubles onto the table and blah, 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 blah. You don't have to. There's a million ways of doing that with nothing. With hardly anything, there's a million ways of doing that, right? Um, but, but, but if you're worried about holding a double, if you're worried about taking two cards and, and, and holding a double to do that sandwich production then this gimmick is going to scare the hell out of you because you basically, when you're holding that gimmick, it's very difficult to not flash. Yeah. It's very difficult to not flash. How many takes did we do? 55 million? <laughs> Something like that. So look, I appreciate that abstract effects have tried to re, um, uh, reinvent themselves. I really do. I really appreciate that. Um, I don't think they've done a great job of it because... Um, no, I'll no. Oh, right, okay. I know what you're like playing with stuff. I know, um, you know, I don't think they've done a great job because they announced on social media and did a big announcement saying they're back. And then, and then we haven't seen anything on social media until their next release. But, you know, that's fine. They announced that they're, uh, they're back. And, you know, getting Tyler in, I think, was a stroke of genius because he's a nice guy. He's a good guy. He's got morals. He's got ethics. All of those things that abstract effects lacked in the past. And uh, he's a bloody good magician as well. But this is, I have to be honest, and as much as I consider Tyler a friend, uh, and he's given my stuff great reviews in the past, and I really appreciate it, I have to be honest about this. I think there's a million ways of doing this better. I think that if you wanted to do a gimmicked version of a sandwich routine, you would use monkey in the middle. And I just think that it's a flimsy gimmick that's going to break. I think that it doesn't really add anything to the plot, and it's why I'm giving it 0%. What about Same. you? Same. <clears throat> zero percent for me zero percent from ireland it's not a great trick unfortunately now temper that with the fact it's only our opinion i saw people i know that they were selling loads of them at magic life so you know maybe maybe i don't know what i'm talking about but that's just my opinion um don't like it think there's a better way of doing it right so the next trick is sharp prediction by paul brooks and um um lemon green lemon Green lemon. That's it, green lemon, yeah. Green lemon. That's the silver. Well, green lemon, a, a subsidiary company of the yeah. people who made your mats, your pads. Yeah, yeah as in like the, the trick came in like a cylinder. Yes, it did. It came yeah. in a cylinder. And wasn't the Guess Kill Murray? Yes, green that lemon. was also green lemon, yes. Yeah. yeah then, which yeah. was a good trick. Yeah. Um, so what we have here is we have Sharp Prediction uh, by, I, I actually reviewed uh, the book that this was originally written in. I actually remember saying in the review that I really wish somebody would market this trick. And lo and behold, it's happened. Uh, there's a slight difference between how the trick was written up in the book and how Green Lemon have marketed it. But they've kind of really expanded the horizons. What you have here is you have five, and I, I think I have to talk about this because... I think it's important to realise the scale of the project because, first of all, this is a huge project and there are so many different options. There's like 30 videos and there's like multiple live performances. There's multiple sequences where they're uh, sitting down and teaching you different ideas. There's additional thoughts on each routine. It's really thorough. No stone yeah. has been left unturned. All the live performances are in the streets. Um, really great. And, and what it is, basically, is, is it's five blank marker pens that look like Sharpies. So five blank Sharpie, uh, Sharpie pens without the Sharpie logo. And you get a stack load of barcodes. And you can stick whichever barcodes onto the Sharpies as you want to. And these barcodes, depending on which barcodes you stick on, allow you to perform a bunch of different routines. Now, the main routine um, that was originally written up in the book is a very simple drawing duplication where you get well you know what i'm going to show you a performance i did this to jack because you were at school 
and I knew you'd get it back late. I did a performance to Jack in the office. I know you've seen it already, but I did a performance to Jack. So let's have a look at me performing this to Jack and then we'll bring it back into the studio and I'll tell you what I think. So I have one of my business cards. I have folded it up and as you can see, um, just like that. Now, what I want you to do is I want you, my little friend, to think of a very simple drawing. Okay. Just a simple drawing. And then what I'd like you to do is draw the simple drawing on the uh, card. Uh, don't show them. Keep it to yourself. Draw, draw a simple drawing. And then when you've drawn it, just, just fold it up and put it there. Okay. Is that okay? Can you do that for me? I'll try. And uh, everybody at home is going <coughs> to begin to realise exactly what it's like being a mind reader right now. Because they're not going to know what you've drawn. I'm not going to know what you've drawn. It's going to be completely impossible to know. Okay. Okay. Oh, you've just recapped. Brilliant. Good job. Um, right. Uh, so, could I possibly know what it is that you've drawn? Can't see like, it. there's no way I could know because I said just do a simple drawing, didn't I? It could be anything. There's a million things. Like, if I asked Michael to do a simple drawing, he could have drawn. And what would you? Do? If I'd have asked you to do a simple drawing, Michael, what would you have done? Um, a, a cat or dog. A cat or a dog. Yeah. Yeah. I did this to Matt the other day and he drew a penis. Like, that's, <laughs> that's the point. It's, 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 it's a different thing. Time. Um, so I'm going to try and do this. We've got something I can write on. We've got a piece of paper here. Got, this looks like paper. Is this paper? This will work. Um, right. Concentrate. 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 Hold this in your hand. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to think, can you remember how you drew that thing? Yeah. Can you imagine it? And now I want you to imagine that you're you're taking the power from that picture and you're sending it to me. Send it to me, Jack. Send it to me. Send it me harder. That sounds so wrong. I see a circle. Does that make any sense? Yeah. You're right, Mike. I don't know. Sorry. Okay. Let's just think about this for a minute. Jack, <coughs> think about this for a second. And seriously think about this for a second. I told you you could do any simple drawing that you wanted to. Yeah. It was a completely free choice. I didn't influence you in any way. You folded it up. There's no way I can see through that. There's no way I can know what's going on. Can I look at what you drew? If you want. Interesting. You drew a stick man. I did. I called him Little Matt. You drew Little Matt. Yes. <laughs> Interestingly, I knew that you'd draw Little Matt. Do you know how? You saw me do it? No, I wasn't looking. I was looking. <laughs> I knew you drew little Matt. And I knew, of course, I, I, I picked up because you sent power to me. I could tell it was a stick man straight away. But I knew it was little Matt. Was so little to Matt? prove it to you, I actually drew a little stick man myself. And to prove I knew it was Matt, I made him really unhappy and I put a baseball cap on. <laughs> That's very spot on. Yeah, it's little. <laughs> you forgot. The important detail that makes Matt a Matt grumpy with a baseball cap. I mean, that's that for me is what makes a Matt a Matt. Little, I should draw his little beard as well. You should draw his little beard, yeah. Um, but here's the thing. I mean, it's a, it's pretty impressive that you were able to draw something and I knew exactly what you would draw and I was able spirit, to yeah. replicate it, right? right? But what if I told <coughs> you I influenced you to draw a, a person? What, specifically little Matt? Well, no, a person. If I told you, because you could have drawn anything. You could have drawn a car. You could have drawn a penis. You could have drawn a million different... A house, a garden. A car. There's a million different things you could have drawn. Right. You went for a person. I did. Would you believe me if I said I'd influenced you? I have. You've been holding on to that Sharpie marker the entire time. Yeah. Did you realise or notice at any point that there's a, there's a, a barcode on there? Is there? Oh, I thought so. Was. Why don't you read the barcode and say what it says? What the fuck? Think of a person. Think of a person. And that's exactly what you did. <laughs> oh, that's weird. 
And that is what you call influence. And you, as a souvenir, get little Matt. Oh, little, I get little Matt. Little grumpy Matt. So uh, that is an incredible idea. Now, when um, Paul originally wrote this up, he had the pens printed uh, with the reveal on instead of being on a Sharpie. Um, but this is such a great idea. You know, you give somebody a, uh, a pen, you give somebody a, 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 a business card or whatever, you get them to draw a simple drawing. Um, you then take it back, you replicate their drawing, you do a drawing duplication, and then you've got, which is great, you know, drawing duplication is a wonderful thing to do anyway, but then at the very end, you kind of say, well, I influenced you, look at the Sharpie, look at the barcode, and it says you will, you will think of a blah. Really great idea. And that's where the original writes up in the book ended. However, they've gone to town. So there's card routines on there where the pen is actually going to uh, predict the card that somebody's chosen. Uh, there's this kind of really weird one called Red Hammer, where somebody is asked to think of a, a tool, uh, kind of a tool that you'd use in a shed or something like a saw, but not a saw. And you have somebody think of a colour and they end up thinking of a red hammer. And the Sharpie has written on the side of it, red hammer. You will think of a red hammer. That was a really cool option. Uh, there's an ESP routine, which is super smart. They actually used um, Michael Murray's ESP uh, design of marked cards along with this. So that somebody takes an ESP symbol, they write it down and they look at the pen and it's actually predicted exactly what, they, oh, just some really great stuff. Yeah. <laughs> We've got some really awesome routines on this project and you and I really enjoyed watching it, didn't we? Yeah. Um, now you don't do that much mentalism unless it's like more of a comedy sort of I'm a kid type mentalism. I don't know if this is the sort of thing yeah. that you would do. Yeah. You're the sort of person to go out and tell the entire audience to say the word scam. You'll and, and graffiti desks with UV ink. I don't think this is the sort of trick that you would do. However, I'm telling you right now, this th there's so many different options. I think that different people will watch this tutorial and they'll have different things that they want to do from it. Me personally, I want to do the drawing jute routine. It takes up virtually no pocket space. I just have a couple of business cards in my wallet. I have a pen or two in my back pocket and I am ready to go and I can do this drawing dupe, which I've done for years, so I know it's going to get great reactions, but then I've got this kicker ending. It's ingenious. Yeah. I want to know what you think. I think it's really good, but as you said, uh, I don't think I would do it. No, I didn't think but you would. It, but it is really good and I'm going to give it 79%. 79%. Yeah, I think this is a very thorough project. I can't see anybody buying this and being disappointed with what they're getting. And I will say this as well. Uh, Green Lemon are hitting it out of the park. I know they've only bought out a couple of releases. Both of the releases we've looked at have been very thorough, yeah. very well thought out, very good from a methodology point of view. And I, I hope they keep it up because as a production company, I think they're exceptional. Uh, I'm going to give this uh, 91%. No, 90, 95%. I'm going to give this 95%. I am super excited about performing this. I'm, I'm going to perform this to Matt. I think I'm going to fall the pants off him. Uh, so I'm going to give it 95%. I think it's really good. So it's 95% for me. It's 79% for the Kid Magician. And we are going to finish off with one bonus routine right now. So the final thing, it's an older item, but we wanted to give a shout out to it because we've recently seen it and Ryland's added it into his act. It's called Bluff by Juan Pablo. And... Um, I, I hadn't really seen this before. Rylan saw it, ordered it, looked at it, and it looks amazing. You did this on social media, didn't you? Yeah. Basically, there's loads of different designs. Rylan got a Rubik's Cube one, go figure. Um, but it's the whole idea of a picture of a Rubik's Cube on a cloth uh, that's mixed up, changing into a solved Rubik's Cube. Now, if you haven't seen it, let's have a look at that Instagram video of Rylan doing it very quickly. Okay, talk to me about this, Ryan. I really like this, and I think it's really good. You learned it in the back of the car, didn't you? Yeah. It's ridiculous. He was sitting in the back of the car, looking on his iPhone at the tutorial, with a, in the dark. <laughs> and then by the time we got for dinner, you'd learnt the trick. Yeah. Stupid. <laughs> T tell me about it. Is the tutorial easy to follow? Well, obviously, because you learnt it in the dark. Like, talk to me about yeah, if it's um, easy, if it's hard, what the angles are like. I want to know everything. Yeah, um... I'd say the angles are pretty good. Uh, I'm just saying that because you mentioned it. Um, the tutorial is easy to follow. Uh, he shows you it like he like goes 
what they see, like, like mm -hmm. it, can, it gives you a front angle of it, like, yeah. it's kind of like a studio performance. Uh, yeah, it's really good. And I really like it when it changes from the mix to the songs. I so just think it looks really good. Would you do this? Because you do a lot of cube magic in I your show. I think I might do it on stage. Yeah, kind yeah. of just like a, just like a. Hey, before you go into your cube solve stuff, hey, this is a picture of a cube. Boom, it's solved. Yeah, boom. I am the king magician, king of cubes. Has to that sort of thing. No. Oh, how are you planning on using it then, Ryland? Let's say, does anyone know what one of these are? There's nothing there. You know what I mean. Oh, yes, it's a picture of Ruby's cube. Yeah, but um, who who can solve one? Well, not that one. It's a picture. But I can actually solve the picture because all I've got to do is give it a little shape like this. And you can see it actually solves. The thing is, I can do that in a, with a real cube. I can actually do it blindfolded. So you can see here I've got a blindfold. Now you've been mixing up that cube the whole time, haven't you? I don't to blindfold and you're into it. Yeah. Boom, I love that. That needs to go in the show, man. That's great. Um, you know, it's an older item. Uh, no, you shouldn't hit me. It's an older item. It's, uh, but it's, it's great. I mean, it's available. You can get a baby gag version. <laughs> Which has got like Brad Pitt on one side and a baby on the other. So you can have them think of a celebrity and you can go, is this your celebrity? It's a baby. Watch. Boom. And it turns into Brad Pitt. Yeah. You can have, oh, the other one you liked was the appearing rose, wasn't it? Yeah, the rose was good. And, and it appears as well. Yeah, which is quite cool. The picture of a rose becomes maybe, real. Maybe I could put a Rubik's Cube up my sleeve. Oh, good idea. Doom. The brains of that kid. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to do this. It's seventy nine percent from me. It's good, but it ain't the sort of thing that I'm going to do. And I give it one hundred percent. One hundred percent for the kid magician. So there you go. Bluff from uh, Juan Pablo. It's available from all good magic dealers, and even the rubbish ones will carry it as well. Yeah. You know who you are, rubbish magic dealers. You know, you know. We know, you know. We know, you know. They, uh, we all. Know. We don't need to say who you are. We all know. There's no reason in the bag. There's another Risha in the bag. There's another Risha in the bag. Bag. <laughs> oh. I'm seeing things. That is another review show in the bag. Thank you once again for joining us right here on Magic TV. Don't forget. <laughs> If you want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. Now, I'm going to be back again next week with Ryland. I'll be back tomorrow with another video, probably with Matt doing a match your entry. If you want to follow Ryland, he is Ryland the Kid Magician on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And uh, yeah, if you want to join the Netrix, it's www.thenetrix.com. Cookie! The, the cookie! And I'll see you again next week. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Craig. I'm Ryland. We'll see you again. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.